theme of variant annotation. Joel Moore from UMass will be talking about Regulum DB and Haploreg. All right, can everyone hear me okay? All right, great. So I'm gonna be talking today about uh, two tools from ENCODE Labs uh, titled Regulum DB and Haploreg. So the motivation behind using these databases is a sort of a common theme that we've been hearing from the scientific presentations earlier today and probably something that you run into in your own research is that a majority of variants that are associated with different diseases and disorders reported by GWAS are non-coding regions of the genome. Additionally, a lot of the variants reported by GWAS aren't necessarily causal and they may just be in high linkage disequilibrium with a causal variant. So we really want to get at well, how are these changes in base contributing to these disorders and dysregulation of possible genes. So we can use data from ENCODE to annotate non-coding regions of the genome, and by synthesizing all this data together, we can predict the function of disease-associated non-coding variants. So there's two tools. Uh, these are the addresses for each one of them. We have Regulum DB and we have Haploreg. So starting first with Regulum DB, this is from Mike Cherry and Mike Snyder's labs. And what's great about this tool is it actually takes all sorts of data from ENCODE and Roadmap and other databases and essentially distills it down to assigning each variant a score. And this score is how likely is this variant in essentially altering transcription factor binding. So if you want to follow along, you can go to regulumdb.org. And this is the web page here. And you can essentially enter many different types of data to try to explore different variants. So you can enter DB SNP IDs themselves. You can also um, upload bed files or BCF files. And you can also enter coordinates directly into the box. So for example, if you want to look at a region, say chromosome 2, and you want to look, for example, at a 10KB region between 20,000 and 30,000, you can just submit that to Regulum DB, and it's going to search through to find all the variants in the region. internet seems to be slow. <laughs> All right, that's okay. We'll just use the slides instead. <laughs> it's always good to have backup slides. So. All right. So if you enter this region into Regulum DB, you then get an output here where you have 44 different SNPs that are in this 10KB region, and it ranks each one of these SNPs by a Regulum DB score that we see here. So this score is based on the amount of different analyses and a number of different lines of evidence that intersect that particular SNP. Let's see if we can, here we go, finally popped up. So if we want to click on our top SNP here, You can actually see that this has a score of 2A, which is likely to affect transcription factor binding. So we want to scroll back up to the top. We see that there's different categories for, depending on what line of evidence actually will overlap each of these variants. So if we see here, we have category one. These are for uh, variants that are actually been reported to be EQTLs in different published studies. And then you can break those down further based on do they overlap a transcription factor binding site from ENCODE? Do they also overlap a motif? And if this motif matches the same transcription factor that's found in ENCODE, it has a higher score than if it's a different motif. We also look and we see we have DNA footprinting data as well. So this is a small region of uh, DNA that's actually protected from the DNA swan 
and you can look to see if there's a motif there for a transcription factor. So it's even stronger evidence that a transcription factor is actually found at this site. And then you can also look um, for general regions of DNA's hypersensitivity in different cell lines. So based on different combinations of these different lines of evidence, you will assign a score um, essentially from one to six. And so the lower the score, the more significant and more likely that this variant is going to affect transcription factor binding. So this is actually finally loaded, which is nice. Um, we can see here, this is what um, you see when you click on um, one of the variants to learn more information. So this one here has a score of 2A, which means it's likely to affect binding. And that means it has every line of evidence except for being reported as an EQTL in a study. So on the very top here, we actually have a very small shot of the UCSC genome browser with ENCODE related tracks. So we have a track for DNA1 hypersensitivity clusters, transcription factor binding annotated with motifs from factorbook.org, and we also have conservation as well. When we scroll down, we actually see everything broken down into specific categories. So we have protein binding data from ChIP-seq. So here we have a transcription factor CEBPB. -E it's actually in HeLa cells that's bound to this region. And so for all these cases, you have the information about the assay. So you have cell type and tissue type uh, information, which is really important when you study these SNPs. And then you also have the reference. So in many cases, it's from roadmap or ENCODE. But in cases where the data is from a specific paper, you actually have the reference. So you can go and see what they did in that particular paper. So scrolling down, we actually see there's motifs. And there's two different methods here. One is just using uh, PWM um, scores. Essentially, you have the matrix that gives you the probability for each position. And this is just searching the sequence for matches. And then you also have results from footprint, DNA's footprinting, which I talked about earlier, where you actually have the small region that's protected by the protein itself. And here we have actually DNA's, um, we have footprinting in both HeLa and um, hepatocytes as well. So we scroll down a bit further, we see that we look at chromatin structure, and this is primarily uh, DNA seq data, and there's a couple fair seq data sets as well. And here we see that the region is actually um, extremely open and um, by DNA-seq in multiple different cell lines, and we also have FAIR-seq on the bottom as well. On the bottom, we have um, data from histone modifications. So here, um, essentially, we have annotations from Chrome HMM, which you'll learn about tomorrow. But Chrome HMM annotates the genome based on different patterns of histone modifications into regions such as promoters, enhancers, repressed regions. So here we have annotations, which you can actually sort. And you can see this region is actually um, predicted to be an enhancer in many cell and tissue types. So you have tissue groups here and the specific tissue listed as well. And this is all from uh, roadmap data. So that's essentially a summary, um, the very uh, periphery of Regulum DB. We'll get into some more analysis later on with some examples. But we also have a tool called Haploreg, and this is from Manolis Kellis' lab. And it, What's nice about these tools is they have similar features, but you can use them together to get essentially a really nice view of what uh, your variants are possibly doing. So for Haploreg, uh, this address is actually through the Broad Institute. I find the easiest way to get there is to actually Google Haploreg uh, since the address is a little long. But um, so this is the second version. Uh, they have a version three right out, right, out right now in the beta form, which you can um, explore as well. But it's very similar in the fact that you can enter uh, an ID of a specific SNP itself, or you can enter a list of different SNPs, or a region of interest as well. So we're actually going to enter here the same SNP that we just looked at um, in, uh, Haplo in Regulum DB. Well, at least the internet's working now. <laughs> so if you notice here, we entered a query for a single SNP. But we actually have an entire list. And this is because haploreg actually returns all other SNPs that are in LD with your, your queried SNP. So our queried SNP here is in red. But we also have reported all the other SNPs that have at least an R squared value of 0 0.8. And so we're looking down. We can actually see sort of a summary of all the different intersections with these SNPs. 
So it's, it's nice if you want, if you have a tag SNP and you're not sure if it's causal, you can actually see if there's other SNPs that may be causal in NLD with your tag SNP. So if, for more information, uh, you can click on the SNP itself. This is sort of just uh, an overview. So if you click on the SNP, you get a nice detailed view. And so you have links to DB SNP, and you also have um, a nice summary of different sequencing features. So you have the position on the genome, you have what the reference allele is, what the alternative allele is, and then you have the minor allele frequency in different populations, which is from the Thousand Genomes Project. You also have different conservation um, scores, and then if there's a functional annotation, DB SNP, for example, if it's been function, if it's been annotated as a missense mutation or a sense mutation. You also have um, data about the closest annotated gene that has both information for gen code genes as well as RefSeq genes. And for example, if it's upstream, downstream, or, or within the gene itself. And then once again, you have these regulatory um, chromatin states from Chrome HMM done on ENCODE cell types as well as roadmap tissue types. So you can see here different predictions, which you'll learn about tomorrow, the different states. You have this region as being an enhancer and then um, enhancer in these uh, tissue types as well. Finally, you also have DNA data as well. And then uh, once again, we see a protein um, from ENCODE ChIP-seq data. We have CEBPB. And finally, what's a nice feature about uh, haploreg as well is we have these regulatory motifs as well. But it gives you, um, like some other tools, actual uh, scores for these motifs. So it gives you the log odds for the the motif with the reference allele as well as with the um, alternative allele. So you can actually see, for example, we have these um, motifs, and we can actually see that not many of them change very drastically between the two. And if we actually go back to Regulum, D, Regulum SNP, Regulum DB, we can see that the position that this particular variant overlaps isn't a very important position in the motif itself. So it could still affect transcription factor binding, but doesn't necessarily drastically disrupt the motif that we're interested in. And you can see this reflected in the actual log odds scores between the reference allele and the alternative allele. Um, and just one, um, another important feature for both of these tools is you can actually make your search based sort of on the disease side of things rather than an individual SNP. So for haploreg, you can actually look through different sets of SNPs that are curated from the NHGRI database. So here it has every single um, study from the NHGRI database as well as the SNPs that are reported in those studies. And it also has um, sort of an umbrella um, category of all SNPs that from belonging to a particular disease. So for example, if you want to search by asthma, we actually see that there are 17 different studies in the database reporting 62 different SNPs. So you can actually search for all of these 62 SNPs together at one time, kind of combining all the studies together. So if we actually want to search this time, we actually see that new blocks come up. And what's interesting about this is that now that we have a collection of SNPs, you can actually look for enrichment in different cell and tissue types for enrichment in regulatory elements as well as DNA's hypersensitivity regions. So in these, for example, these asthma SNPs, in each one of these cell lines are enriched and more likely to find these asthma SNPs in these regions than just control SNPs by chance. And what's nice is you start to see some uh, disease-related um, cell types and tissue types, for example, such as embryonic lung, lung fibroblasts, small airway epithelial cells, et cetera. So you can start maybe trying to look for disease-relevant cell and tissue types. Um, one important aspect of haploreg is making sure you have the, you're running with the correct options. So um, there's quite a few different options you can look at. One is the LD threshold, so this is your R squared value. It can range essentially from 0.2 all the way to 1. And if you choose the non-applicable option, you're just searching for the SNP itself as opposed to any LD. What's actually really vital is um, choosing the correct um, population to do your LD calculation. So by default, it's set on the European population. But if, for example, if you're looking at results from a GWAS and a Chinese population, you want to make sure that you, you click the Asian population for your LD calculation. And then the last options are actually uh, for here, just for the display default. Uh, so for example, you can do your 
display ENCODE epigenomes or roadmap epigenomes, but if you, when you actually click on the SNP itself and look for more details, both of these are uh, displayed. And then finally, um, for your um, enhanced enrichment analysis, you can choose uh, different backgrounds as well, which is really important. So you, if you're doing um, results from a particular uh, GWAS, like one individual GWAS, you want to make sure you actually map, match the SNP chip that's used in the study. So here it has Affymetrix uh, chips and Illumin chips as well. But the default is all SNPs in the 1,000 Genomes pilot. So, so we're just going to do a quick um, example. And then we have some exercises as well for you to work on. Uh, there's three different problem sets as well if we have time. So this SNP here um, is in the NHGRI database. It's associated with inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease. And it actually has a quite a significant p-value in both of 10 to the negative 16 and 10 to the negative 19. And so this was from a study in 2010 and a study in 2012. So this SNP, however, is in um, the non-coding region of the genome. It's actually in this gene called SMAD3. And there's four different transcript variants of this gene. And it's in the intron of three of them and it just upstream of the start site for the fourth variant. So we don't really know how this contributes to IBD and Crohn's disease, so we want to look at this SNP further. So what we can do is essentially start off with Regulum DB to see what score does Regulum DB give this particular SNP. So we just search for it. And we actually see that the SNP has a score of 2A. So it's very likely to affect transcription factor binding, which is sort of exciting since it's been found in this GWAS and may actually be contributing directly to disease. So to find out more information, we can click on it. And we see in the genome, um, in the small genome browser view, there's a lot going on at this locus. So we have really high levels of H3K27 acetylation, which we know marks active promoters and active enhancers. We also see that it's in a DNA hypersensitivity cluster and that it's overlapping transcription uh, factors that are bound there, as well as transcription factor motifs in green. So as we scroll down, we actually see that there's a lot of proteins bound here. So you can actually sort by protein and see that there's a lot of action essentially going on here in all different cell types. And you also notice, too, there's a lot of June. Uh, it's a transcription factor here that's bound in this region. And as we scroll down further, we can also see that there's a lot of motifs found in both DNA's footprinting and by uh, just looking at the sequence itself. So we have motifs for this BAC1, and we also have motifs for AP1, and so June is actually a component of AP1 transcription factor. So that's exciting to see that we actually see a motif for a transcription factor that's bound at that region. And as you can scroll down, again, same story. There's a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of DNA hypersensitivity regions and many different cell types. And there's also um, predicted, to be, um, promote, uh, predicted to be an active TSS site as well as enhancer regions in this region. So if we continue on, now if we say we want to go to haploreg to make sure, well, we are, comp we are pretty sure that something is going on pop at this locus. But it's also possible that there's other SNPs in LD with our lead SNP that could be contributing as well. So we want to look at other SNPs that are in LD. We can use haploreg here. For our options, this particular study was done in European populations, so we can keep that set there. And we can submit our query. And now we can see all the different variants that are in LD with our queried variant in red. And it actually looks like our queried variant is most likely, would be most likely to be the causal variant in this case. This is because it has enhancer marks in eight different cell types, it has DNAs in 41 different cell types, and there also has uh, many bound proteins in different cell types. So if we also want to look a bit further, we can see once again we know there's a lot going on in this region, but if we scroll down to these motifs here, we actually look at this AP1 motif. And in many cases, there's actually a drastic change in going from the log odds from the reference to the alternative. So it's possible that this uh, variant is actually disrupting transcription factor binding of AP1, which is also a component of AP1 is June, which we saw was bound from the ENCODE data. 
So it could be drastically affecting the binding of this transcription factor and then possibly leading to dysregulation of SMAD3. Um, so just uh, one last part. Um, this is uh, Regulum DB's uh, sort of version of curating all this, um, all the variants in the NHGRI database. So here they actually list um, different diseases and phenotypes which you can then click on and it will list different variants that you can then explore further and it will give um, the score for this variant uh, in Regulum DB as well as um, also LD, SNPs that are in LD for this particular SNP as well. So you can also search through um, this which is at regulumdb.org um, slash GWAS. So now, um, I think it's maybe 10 minutes, it's about 10 minutes, there's three different exercises. Um, or you can also just explore the databases that yourselves if you have a particular variant that you're already interested in. The first uh, exercise has a lot to do with LD and the second uh, has a lot to do with um, looking for enrichment in particular cell and tissue types. And the last one really demonstrates the importance of choosing the correct population when you're doing your analysis. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask or I can come around individually as well. <laughs>